but we really don't have anything else in this frame that's going to give us anything new so what do we do we simply click apply and then we work through the footage until we find an area that may work for us for instance right at the beginning here we could potentially get let's have a look we could potentially get a noise profile from this very bright area here so let's have a look click on the setup dialog box go in and let's pull an area through Ah, but we've got a problem it says there is clipping in the red channel can we pull another area over here nope it's not going to work for us however we've got something here that may work and if we look at our individual channels we can see well look there's the red right at the end that's not been selected because it's yellow again green and blue so that's a good one to choose because it's going to cover areas that have not been covered we can select here manual fine tune and it's pulled all of those down and is continuing as you will see to give us that trend it's important to say that if you select an area that doesn't have uniform color information or brightness information you will get a warning it says area not uniform in the Y or the luminance channel so you do get lots of feedback from the neat video interface however avoid if you can choosing areas that are just bright and don't have an awful lot of noise in them it says here we've got clipping in the R channel as we saw earlier basically it's telling me that this is so bright it's just clipping we're not going to get any usable information so avoid areas that are just featureless without noise you are looking for noise now we can have a look for one more maybe and see if we can actually fill in any more so let's click apply and let's look for one more area I think there's something towards the end from experience yes there's this car maybe we'll get something from this car we've got a couple of areas we've got an area here which is featureless an area here which is featureless and an area here let's see if it adds to our noise profile so open up the setup box and let's try these three areas so let's try here does that give us anything choose as big an area as you can always and let's go through the channels no we've already got something in the area that's not going to help us how about in green nope it's already covered in green just look for this bigger square blue again that's not going to give us anything okay well how about here on this car go for a bigger area as you can get away with again if I went too far I get a warning it's not uniform so make sure it's uniform and you can see noise and uh, let's have a look again yes that is going to give us something in the red channel so that might be useful and in green but not in blue okay so let's look at RGB and click manual fine tune and again it's giving us this this trend that we want which is great so that's brilliant and how about just here is that going to give us anything let's have a look and go through uh, nothing on blue nothing on green and it might give us something on red so let's try that one do the manual fine-tune and again it pulls it into area so we're beginning to get this trend now when you have got all the information that you think you can get and you've filled in as many of these dots as you can do and you're ready to finish firstly before you finish double check the noise filter settings so go in and have a look check that you're happy with the results is it doing what you want it to do get some feature areas and move them around and check you're happy with the way it looks yep that's doing what you want it to do you pretty much got there then go back to your device noise profile and then click this button here which is called the autocomplete and what the autocomplete is going to do if we look at this red channel it's going to say well there's a trend here and what I need to do is pull it into a trend so if I just show you with the red channel and click autocomplete it's pulled the whole thing into a line if we look at all of the channels they are pretty much in a line now let's go back to our noise filter settings are we still happy with that is that doing everything that we want it to do if that looks okay then we can just click apply and then we can look at it in our application and we've got a pretty good result I've got one other thing to say and for this I'm going to open up my setup dialog box once more you see all these nodes down here I'm going to click on the red one all these nodes wouldn't it be brilliant if you had something that you could stick in front of the camera that would be able to analyze all these nodes just by clicking auto profile well there is one thing we can use and that's on this website here www.neatimage.com forward slash test target and you can get these test targets and you download them and print them let me open one here 
Now, if you have any control over the video camera being used, you are doing the filming yourself or you are arranging for the filming to be done, what you do is you ask them to film this for a few seconds first before they do their filming and before they change their camera mode any time. Then you can take a wonderful noise profile from this middle section, which is nice medium brights, no features, just area, a neat video will automatically look at all of these other areas to fill in all of these different nodes because when you click auto profile it also does auto fine tune so it looks at the frame it looks at the area you have selected but also for any other small areas within this frame so that it can fill in all these different nodes so if you give it a target with all of these nodes represented from darks to brights it will, when you click Auto Profile, automatically fine-tune all of these nodes and you won't have to do it. So Auto Fine-Tune is automatically applied when you click Auto Profile. The only time you would ever need to click Auto Fine-Tune yourself is when you load your own profile that you created earlier and apply to another clip. Now you don't have to watch the tutorial from this point if you're happy with your results. But if you want to deal with the smoothing that's taken place in this particular shot, so that you have a few tips for later on for your own shots, this is just an additional bit on how to achieve some sharpening through a couple of different methods. OK, I'm going to open up the setup dialog box again. Now, there are two approaches that we can take to sharpening. I'm going to go to the noise filter settings, because this is where we're going to be starting our sharpening from. We have built a really good noise profile. Neat Video now knows what is noise and what is features. And it's reduced the noise in the chrominance or the colour channels. Notice here the noise reduction amount. It has reduced noise in the chrominance or the colour channels by 100%. However, in the Y channel or what's called the luminance channel, it has just reduced it by 60%. Now, if we pull up the luminance channel and go up to say 80, for example, you'll see, you may not be able to see completely in the video, but you'll see when you do it yourself, that more noise has gone, but also a great deal of smoothing has taken place. Now I can pull that back to the default 60, which in most examples is going to work perfectly. It's very rare that you actually need to play around with this. But if you do have a problem here, there's two ways that we can sharpen this image. The first one is that we can use the sharpening box at the bottom. And what we need to sharpen up is the luminance channel, so we will sharpen Y. So click on Y. And if conservative is clicked, leave it clicked, because it does a great job with dealing with the sharpening of light so they still look natural. So leave conservative on, or switch it on if it's not ticked. And now we're going to sharpen the Y channel. And then we need to start looking at these faders. It's going to look, in the first one, at high frequency details. So that might well be, say, the leaves of these trees over here then medium details, which might well be, say, the lines of the car, and then bigger details, which, which are going to look at general things and bigger bits and pieces in this particular shot. So I always recommend take it right up to the top and just see what difference it makes instantly. And then turn it off again. Have a look, see what difference it's made. I think that makes quite a big difference, particularly around the back here. Now let's take the medium one and pull it right up and see what difference that makes. I think that sharpens the lines of the cars considerably. Turn it off again. Turn it on. Turn it off. This is just to get a feel for what each individual channel is going to do. And for the low frequency, turn it up. That's actually producing a sort of a slightly weird result here. That's not really what we want. So I think for these low frequency ones, we don't want to change. But some frequency changes in the high to mid could make quite a difference. So let's just pull them both out to about midway. How does that look? Well, we've got a certain amount of sharpening, but do you know what? The problem with sharpening is that it's very easy to overdo. So I always say, if you've come up with something that you think looks good, always dial it back a bit, because you'll end up over sharpening, and you want to get away with the minimum possible. So just keep pulling them back until you've got something that looks OK, and you're happy with it. And then maybe you've gone a bit too far back, you can pull it back up, but play with these. This is called push-pull. You push one way, you pull it the other until you get the results that look great and you're happy with them. So that's one method of sharpening that can make the image look a lot better. And I click apply and I think that image looks a lot sharper already. You can see the wires clearly. The whole thing looks a lot better. You can turn it off to see the original. 
and we haven't lost much sharpening between the original shot and the noise reduced shot. They look almost identical from a sharpening perspective, it's just that the noise is completely gone. But there is another method which I'm going to demonstrate to you, which is a slightly unusual method but is very good with dealing with this particular problem. So click the setup box again, go back to the noise filter settings and turn off or take right down these three sliders and turn off sharpening here. What I want you to do is I want you to remove all the noise reduction, so this is the noise reduction area, I want you to remove it from the luminance channel. So take the Y fader and take it all the way down to zero. Neat Video still has a perfect noise profile, we just haven't taken any of the noise out of the luminance channel and we're going to make Neat Video work in a slightly different way to still give us excellent results. So click apply with the Y channel at zero. And if you're still in standard mode by the way, let me just demonstrate, you would have your luminance channel at zero. Just go back to advanced, so click apply. Now there is still noise reduction taking place. If I click this on and off you'll see this is before, you can see there's a lot of noise in there, after there is less noise, significantly less noise. Because Neat Video has still taken this wonderful noise profile that we have created and is applying it to the shot and it's doing it through this filter here, the temporal filter radius. And it's looking at three frames, it says one here because it's looking at the frame before, the frame that we're on and the frame that we're after and it's taking the noise profile that we've created and it's looking at those frames and saying is that noise, if so I'm going to remove it, but it's also comparing it with the next frame and comparing it with the frame after to see what is noise and what is not and remove it. So if I increase the number of frames that it's analysing, let's go all the way just straight up to five which is its maximum, it's now going to be looking at the five frames before the present frame, the present frame itself and the five frames after to try and work out what is noise, in other words just flashing on and off, and what is a feature like these leaves that should be there and are just moving in the wind. And then it can analyse it and still keep everything sharp by just removing the noise. It just happens to have a much wider radius to look through to analyse for that noise. And you end up with this lovely sharp image and as you can see those cables are still beautifully sharp. You can see that you've got a really good result. Well I know this has been a long tutorial but there's been an awful lot of very valuable information and I hope you found the tutorial useful. My name's Andrew Davis, and thank you for using Neat Video.